This lesson goes with section 3.1 in your textbook. During this chapter, we're going to be trying to solve an equation, and it's helpful for us to remember what exactly it means to solve an equation. Say, for, any, for example, on a test, you see a problem that looks like this. 70 equals 19 minus 3x. And the directions above the problem say, solve this equation. What exactly is it that you're being asked to do? Well, I'd like you to think back to the always, sometimes, never activity we did, where you determined whether a particular equation was always true, was sometimes true, or was never true. The equation shown here is sometimes true. That means that some numbers for x when we plug them in make this equation balance, and some numbers don't. When it asks us to solve our equation, we're trying to find out exactly what numbers, what values of x do make this equation true. And there's a couple different ways we can come at this. The first is we can plug in check. So to check if a number is a solution to an equation, we take that number and we just plug it into whatever equation we're looking at. So for example, if a question says, is x equals 4 a solution to this equation, we would plug in a 4 where there's an x here. We would replace the x with 4 and we'd have 6 times 4 minus 7 equals 17. Is that true? If it's true, then x equals 4 is a solution. Well, 6 times 4 is 24, and 24 minus 7 is in fact 17. So that means that 4 is a solution to this equation. Because when we plugged 4 in for x, the equation balanced. So let's come back to the problem that was on the first slide. We want to find a value that is a number that we can plug in for x that makes this equation be true. In other words, what does x have to be for 70 to be equal to 19 minus 3x? Well, we could do something similar to what we did on the previous slide. We could pick a number for x, plug it in, and try it. Pick another number for x, plug it in, and try it. But you can imagine that that could end up taking us a long time to correctly guess what x has to be. So we're wondering, is there a more efficient way to find out what x has to be? Here's where we're going to use the properties of equality that we learned. Any step that keeps our equation balanced, that keeps the two sides equal to each other, can help us get closer to a solution to finding out what x has to be. We're going to keep applying the properties of equality, that is doing things like adding the same number to both sides, subtracting the same number from both sides, multiplying both sides by the same thing, and dividing the both sides by the same thing. We're going to keep doing that until we can get to a point where we have x all by itself. Now, there's a lot of different right ways to do these kinds of problems. Sometimes you're going to want to apply the subtraction property of equality first, but other times you might want to apply the distributive property first. You're going to develop a sense when you look at a problem of what to do first. What I'd like to show you now is a sequence of steps that will always work. It may not always be the most efficient or the most clever way to solve a problem, but it will always work. So these are the steps you want to get in your notes. We're going to work through an example problem that has quite a lot going on in it. So the example problem we're going to use is 2 times the quantity x plus 2 so we're going to have to do some distributing, plus 3x plus 5 equals 14. So I'm going to show you a series of steps that will always work to get you to a solution for x, and we're going to apply them to this particular equation. The first step is to apply the distributive property if needed. What does that look like in this case? Well, I've shown the original equation on the top line, and I took 2 times x, that gives me the 2x term on the second line, and 2 times 2, that gives me the 4 term on the second line. And everything else in the equation stays the same. So all I did was I applied the distributive property. Next is to combine like terms on the same side of the equal sign. Please, please, please remember you can't combine across the equal sign. So if you have a 2x term on the left and a 2x term on the right side of the equal sign, those don't add up to a 4x term somewhere. So 
Here's what our equation looks like after we've applied the distributive property. Let's combine our like terms. First, we have some variable terms where the variable is x. We have 2x and 3x. If we add 2x and 3x together, we get 5x's. Then, still working on the left side of the equation, we have some constant terms. Those are terms whose value doesn't vary. They are constant. We have 4 and 5. Sorry, that little circle's a little off. When you add 4 and 5 together, you get 9. So when we've done our combining of like terms on the left-hand side of the equation, we have 5x plus 9. That's still equal to 14 on the right-hand side because there's nothing we can combine on the right-hand side. A couple of common mistakes. Remember that 5x plus 3 is not the same thing as 8x. We can't add x's and 1's or 2's or 3's together. So 5x plus 3 can't be combined anymore. Please also remember that you can't add together variables that have different exponents. So x squared plus x is not equal to x cubed. We can multiply unlike terms together, but we can't add them. Our next step is to get the variable term, that's the chunk that has the x in it, by itself on one side of the equation. So in the last step that we did, we were left with 5x plus 9 equals 14. I'd like to get this, I'd like to apply the properties of equality so that the 5x is all by itself on one side of the equation. Right now, 5x has 9 added to it, so I'm going to need to subtract 9 from both sides of the equation. If I take away 9 from the left side, I need to take away 9 from the right side to keep my equation balanced. When I do that, I have still 5x on the left-hand side, positive 9 and negative 9, those add up to 0, and then on the right-hand side, 14 minus 9 gives me 5. So here, I use the inverse property of addition. If you add a number that is positive 9 and its opposite, negative 9, the answer is 0. And I know that 5x plus 0 is just 5x. That's the identity property of addition. So I have 5x equals 5. When you're trying to decide what step to do here, sometimes it's helpful to think of the order of operations in reverse. PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. If we reverse the order of those letters, we end up with SADMEP. So when you're trying to isolate a variable, sometimes it's helpful to look at your equation and ask, do I have to do any subtracting to get the variable by itself? In this case, we did. We subtracted 9. Then you would look at the equation and ask, do you have to do any addition and then any division, etc., etc.? The last step is going to be to get the variable, that's x or y or whatever we're trying to solve for, all by itself by removing, that means getting rid of, the coefficient. The coefficient is the number in front of the x. It's the number that x is multiplied by. In the example that we're working with, our coefficient is 5 because there's a 5 in front of the x. I don't want to know what 5x's are equal to. I want to know what just 1x is equal to. And remember, we were thinking about the order of operations in reverse. So we already did some subtraction to get the 5x term by itself. There's no addition that's going to help us in this case, but some division, the next operation here, will help. If we divide both sides of this equation by 5, that's the coefficient in front of the x, we're going to end up with x all by itself. So I divide the entire left side of the equation by 5, and the entire right side of the equation by 5. On the left hand side, 5 over 5 is just 1, so I have 1x, I don't normally write the x there, equals 5 over 5. 5 over 5 is 1, so I end up with x equals 1. That's the solution to my original equation. Way back in the beginning I had that big long complicated equation. What's the one number that makes that equation true for x? The correct one number that is the solution is x equals 1. How do we check that? We plug it back into our original equation way back at the beginning. So this was my equation, 2 times the quantity x plus 2 plus 3x plus 5 equals 14. 
I replace the x's with 1's, so I have 2 times the quantity 1 plus 2, plus 3 times 1, plus 5, equals 14. First I do the stuff inside the parentheses. 1 plus 2 is 3. I have some multiplying going on here. 3 times 1 is still 3. And 2 times 3 is 6. So I have 6 plus 3 plus 5 equals 14. That is true. 6 plus 3 is 9, plus 5 more is 14. Since 1, when I plug it in for x, makes the two sides of the equation be equal to each other, 1 is the solution to this equation. So what do you do when you have fractions in a problem? Suppose you have an equation like this, x over 5 plus 3 equals 5. Again, remember, we can apply any of the properties of equality that keep our equation balanced. I'm going to think about order of operations in reverse, and the first thing I'm trying to do is to get the term that has the x in it by itself. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, and when I do that, I end up on the left with x over 5, and on the right, I have 5 minus 3 is 2. So now I have x over 5 equals 2. Now what do I do? Well, again, I'm thinking about my order of operations in reverse. I've done all of the subtraction and addition that help get x by itself. Now I can do some multiplication. I'm going to choose the number that is the denominator in this problem, the 5. And I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 5. Why am I going to do that? How is that going to help get x all by itself? Well, if I multiply both sides of the equation by 5, what I have on the left is 5x over 5, and on the right I have 10. But I can simplify 5x over 5. Again, 5 over 5 is just 1. Those 5s cancel out. And I'm left with x equals 10. That's the solution to my equation. I can plug that back into my original equation and see that, in fact, 10 over 5 plus 3 is equal to 5. Sometimes in this section, when you, especially when you come across word problems, it'll help you to remember which words go with which operations in math. So if you see a problem that asks for the difference or uses the word minus or subtract, we're going to use the subtraction operation. If you see the word sum or addition or increased by, we're likely going to use addition. If the problem asks you to find the product of two numbers, we're multiplying. And the quotient of two numbers means we're dividing the first by the second.